Hi, my name's Jamie and welcome to my review of the Samsung HTJ 5500 5.1 surround sound home cinema system, which you can see one of the speakers just behind me there. Um, just before we get going, I just want to say again, um, I bought this from AO.com and it came the very next day. They kept me informed the whole way through uh, and as always, it was absolutely excellent service. So thank you very much to them. We've got our center speaker, subwoofer, we've got two front speakers and then uh, the two rear speakers that are basically the surround sound they are going to go at the back of the room. Uh, you've got the main unit which is the amp and also as you can see it's a 3D Blu-ray player. Um, tons of speaker wire to connect them all up to the main unit. Uh, power cable and then remote. Just a note on what's in the box, um, the uh, installation guide. I'm sure you also what's in the box for a slightly different model number, which is the 5550W as opposed to the 550. So setting up the uh, surround sound system is uh, very simple. The uh, installation guide is very easy to follow. Um, and I'll just talk you through roughly what you do for each speaker. Um, so just here, we have one of the surround speakers. If you're not too sure, it does say on the back, um, surround right. Um, so if you look in the installation guide, you'll notice that surround right um, is just down here and that's the grey connection. So out of all your speaker wires, you find the one with the grey connector, which is this one. Um, and this will just pop in the back of the main unit here. It literally just pushes in. Uh, on the other end, you have a red and a black wire. Uh, and at the very end, they're just exposed, if you can see that on the camera. And then all you need to do on the back of the appropriate speaker is just push down the button. And as you can see there, a hole opens up, which you can just put that wire into. Um, make sure you match the red and the black ends up to the right holes. Um, so once you follow that, um, you can use the installation guide to uh, arrange your speakers in the way that it recommends. Connecting the actual main unit to the TV itself is again very simple. Um, I'll, there's a couple of options to do that and I'll just go over them in a second. Just show you the back of the main unit. Um, you've got the power connection there. This is connected for all the speakers as we've already shown you. Um, now this is the first option for connecting to the TV and this is your RCA. Uh, it says here AUX in. Um, so again it's red and white um, cable uh, that can connect to red and white cable on your TV. Uh, you can get leads that will do these red and white um, to a headphone jack as well which will just connect into your TV nice and simply. Uh, your next option is optical, um, again this requires an optical cable you can pick up from most places, probably does give the best quality sound um, in my opinion and then the final one is HDMI, uh, again very easy just connect it straight to your TV, no problem. Uh, there's a LAN connection here but the, the unit does have Wi-Fi. The speakers themselves, uh, gloss black around the outside, you can just see the, uh, the silver cone just inside which does look nice and obviously the Samsung logo just at the front. Um, they are quite small speakers actually and I'm surprised by the size of them when they came. I think it's ideal for the, the two rear speakers because you don't really want them to be very big anyway um, and the sort of sound output that they're putting out isn't very much um, or very often when you're watching films. Um, for the front speakers, like I said, I just found these are a little smaller than I had sort of hoped that they would look. Um, still nice looking, um, very similar to the, the rear speakers but a slight, slightly bit taller. The system comes with its own remote, um, which again I'll just show you through here. So you've got a power button, eject for any DVDs that are in, uh, function button to change between the different functions it has, um, volume, mute, uh, your fast forward and play buttons, uh, your home button which brings up this screen, which I will go over in just a second, and then obviously your directional buttons uh, and settings. Um, just at the bottom we have uh, the TV sound button, so basically what that does is flicks the sound between the, the actual TV speakers or the system itself. Uh, and then this button here, the uh, EQ, that will basically flip through a few different preset equalizers, which you can customize if you so wish. I'll just talk you through the home screen, which you get to just by pressing this button here on the remote. On the left, we've got the play disc uh, sign. Obviously, it's saying no disc in at the moment. This will play DVDs, Blu-rays and 3D DVDs or Blu-rays as well. Photos and videos now, this will play these through a USB stick, also music as well. If you've got this, the, the, the file stored on a USB stick, you can play them via there. There is also the option to do the screen mirroring, um, which you can just see if I just scroll down the uh, screen mirroring. Um, now you need an app to do that. Um, and to be honest, from previous experience, it works well between Android phones um, and the TV, but not very well between uh, iPhones. I think there's a disagreement between Samsung and Apple as to um, 
how much they want to make it work between themselves and if you just google that you'll, you'll see that even when it does work it's quite intermittent so just be wary of that if you're expecting your iPhone to work absolutely perfectly with it um, I've not actually tried it myself because it's not really something I would, I would use and uh, as you can see at the bottom there's also some apps so it does act as almost a smart TV you've got the, the usual apps and you can have a look for more um, stuff like Netflix and iPlayer and then just to the right along the bottom here you've got the screen mirroring which I've already talked about uh, change device will just bring up if there's a disc or anything in there which obviously we don't have at, at the moment um, if there's a USB stick it in, uh, inserted into the, the player as well it will bring that up there uh, function just lets you choose between the different outputs or, or inputs of sound so uh, there's digital in, uh, aux and then there's a tuner uh, for FM radio and also Bluetooth so this basically means that if you, I've got the uh, speakers actually connected to my TV via HDMI at the moment but if you had something else connected via digital and auxiliary um, it would allow you to choose between um, the different ones. This button will just flick through the different ones so power base uh, is, is, is the first one that comes up essentially that's just turning the subwoofer up to maximum um, which can be good for your music but it does drown out a little bit of the rest of your music so it depends what you want Maybe if you're using it um, for more of a party, then it might be better. Um, but it does reverberate around the whole house, so just be wary. Um, loud will obviously just put the volume a little bit louder. Night mode basically cuts out the any of the bass, so um, you can you can listen to it at night without upsetting your neighbours, because like I say, the bass does go through the whole thing. Um, the user one is that essentially just letting you you set set your own one that you've um, you've set up on the settings, and then the cinema and music. So having lived with the system for a week or so now, um, I can definitely say it is an, an excellent system. It does a very good job um, at, at being a surround sound system. Um, one thing as I picked on right at the start um, is the size of the speakers. Now, for some people this might be great if you want more of a, a discrete system, that's fine. Um, for me, there's a little bit of space at the side of the TV um, that could do with being filled by some slightly larger speakers. Um, however, I don't think the performance is, is affected too much by the size of the speakers, and I think they do do a very good job. When it comes to using the system to listen to music, um, again, I think it does the job very well. I think the main difference between this system and just a normal set of active speakers um, is the bass that this provides, obviously with the separate subwoofer, um, which really does add some depth to the sound of the music. Um, I like my music to be quite bassy as well, so for me, I, I do enjoy that. Um, I don't think the quality um, of the rest of the speakers is as good as some other speakers, so I normally use KEF um, active speakers, um, and I don't think the sound quality is quite as good, but there's definitely more bass in this, so depending on how you like your music um, will depend on what you prefer there. Um, one thing to note when you are setting the system up um, to play music is that the centre speaker doesn't really have much to do when you are playing music, um, so I wasn't sure if I'd set it up wrong and it wasn't working, um, but you can do a speaker test. Uh, via the settings menu which does just let you um, test all the different speakers. As a surround sound system I think as I say it does a very good job. I would describe it as, as probably entry to mid-level um, in, in regards of being a surround sound system. Um, the bass is great when you're watching uh, films and action, you know, any action is happening like explosions and stuff, they do sound great uh, and the speakers go plenty loud enough. It's also nice to have the satellite speakers just behind your head um, which do get utilised more in films. Um, I think it's quite compact um, and it does the job very well for the size of it um, and I think if, if, if you have to just a surround sound system more for cinema um, without spending too much money I think it's a very good option to go for. Um, if, obviously if you're wanting something with a bit more drama and a bit more um, depth and, and loudness to the, to the speakers then um, you may want to look at some slightly bigger speakers. Um, also although it's not too much of a faff um, to set up, obviously having the speakers at the back that aren't wireless um, then I have had to pull the carpet up to, to fit the wires underneath. Um, so you may want to think about buying the version with the wireless uh, rear speakers. Um, although obviously that will cost a little bit more money. So I would definitely recommend a system, um, but I think you really need to think about what you definitely want from it um, before you go ahead and buy it. So if you're after um, something to listen to your music as well as uh, watching the TV obviously, and, and, and the music is very important to you, um, then you may want to think about some slightly different speakers, so maybe look at a different system. Um, if you're after something that basically just expands the sound of your TV, um, then you might also want to think about a sound bar, um, just for easiness really, you don't have to go through the faff of setting it up, and obviously you don't have any speakers behind your head. Um, so if it's more just to expand the sound of your TV, um, most sound bars do come with a subwoofer as well, so that's probably a good, easy option. Um, however, if you do want surround sound and you want them speakers behind your head because you're watching a lot of films, um, you don't want to you know, spend mega money, uh, then I do think this is a really good option to start with and just see how you find it. Um, I am I'm very happy with it. I think it does a very good job um, and I, I can definitely recommend it.